Okay, y'all, you don't even need me for this one. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Breckenridge. Ski slopes here. I'm talking about diversifying your lead sources and I'm excited just to be in this, this beautiful backdrop. But yeah, diversifying lead sources. You don't wanna have just one. Am I right? The power needs to be in your hands. And if you're all in on just one lead source, even if it's Google, and God knows I love Google, algorithm change, things happen. Um, lead cost goes up, different things like that. You should be doing different things. You should be doing, um, like I talk about door knocking, Facebook organic, Facebook uh, ads. But I also wanna talk about this concept of every single lead gen thing that you do, to me, is intended to just scale relationships doesn't matter how many hacks you have, how many random things you do to get people in the door or get leads to your sales team. At the end of the day, what it is, is you're just creating relationships and those relationships can blossom. And really, there's a chance many, many years in your business that you don't need to do some of the lead gen things that you have to do when you're in growth mode. I mean, I would, con I, I hope I get to continue to do them because they're fun. I like making leads happen, but we're just trying to get lots of relationships. So the best people, that, the people that get the best ROI from Google had Google ads and, and SEO and stuff like that are the ones that think of it when they get a Google lead as a relationship that they're going to go and invest into and then get more relationships from being good to people, right? Being good to all the people. Even if you're using Angie or something like that, that people create relationships. I had a friend of mine um, back in the day, I was I kind of like knew that a lot of roofers and contractors didn't like Angie, but he said with Nextdoor and Angie that he would essentially do something for someone and then on Angie or Nextdoor and then create a relationship and then they would suggest him to his neighbors. And so he eventually would take that relationship off of those platforms and he didn't need to do as much on there. Now he was a single operator. He's kind of a handyman, but I mean, that's the deal. You're using all these lead gen sources to, to create relationships and scale those out. So it doesn't matter what it is, but gotta have more than one. Hey, I, this week, Facebook, kind of cranked down my, I don't know, I, I posted something or I, I liked too many things or something, Facebook like decreased my reach. And I'm like, thank goodness that I'm not 100% dependent on one on Facebook. Yes, I get a lot of leads and stuff from Facebook, but I'm really glad that that's not my only thing. And I'm really glad that um, I have a lot of different lead gen sources. And I, I think you should too. But let's take a break in a regular scheduled programming just to look at this beautiful, beautiful backdrop. Oh yeah. Breckenridge, baby. It's just beautiful. So I'll take a deep breath this morning, breathe it in. If you're in Colorado with me, you probably have to uh, breathe in a little harder because the uh, elevation here. But I have not been to Breckenridge or any of these like kind of beautiful ski towns, so I am impressed. It is fun. Yes, Vanessa, beautiful view, appreciate it. So I'll talk a little bit about, a little bit more about diversifying lead sources and uh, I also invite you to participate. Got some coffee this morning. Whatever you guys wanna talk about, I'm open to it. That's, that's why I do these lives. I know that I could get through the content really, really quick, but part of it is like I like 
being on these lives and just ch chatting with people afterwards sometimes too because live, going live is kind of a different vibe. It's like, uh, hey, we're hanging out a little bit. You can talk to me. Uh, John McGee, this is Colorado. Yes, sir. It's um, Breckenridge, whatever city's near, nearby that. I don't know. I just hop on the plane when they tell me to. You know what I mean? Mariah, thoughts on ChatGPT? This is a great topic. I think um, I think it's gonna be big. I think uh, content through this plot. I think it's gonna get better and better. I think the AI content is gonna get better and better, and I think people should be messing around with it. John McGee says, Copper Mountain, have fun, my guy. Absolutely, thank you, sir. So I think you should mess around with ChatGPT and try stuff out. I think you should. Um, I think there's a lot of good use cases for it. At present, I don't want to say that you should be using it for SEO because it's, a, it's potentially not good, and we don't know yet. So I'm testing it. I've got a big test out on a website that's written almost primarily almost completely on ChatGPT and I'm seeing if it ranks and if it does, I'm going to figure out how to utilize that for our clients and I'm going to try, you know what I mean? Like if, if it's something that allows people to scale content quickly, that being said, I do not endorse it or suggest it for SEO at the moment. Um, my one thing right now, I believe it will get better. It's all about the prompt design. ChatGPT, you have to give it good information to get good information back. Right now, I've tried to use it to help me like write a post on social or something like that, and I'm never like, I'm never like excited about what it puts out. Like, I don't really want to post it, and that kind of just is like an indicator to me that potentially it's not ready to be like persuasive or interesting enough. Like, I think what it lacks in those situations is context of my audience and stuff like that. So. Maybe people will get better at training it and the, the prompts, and I will get better. But I, ultimately, I don't waste a ton of time on it for real marketing at the moment, even though I know it's an indicator of what's to come, and it is kind of a, it's kind of a bell ringer for, hey, if you're just pumping out average, vanilla, basic content, you need to level up. So if anything, it's competition for basic writers and you need to involve emotion and humor and and context and and humanity in your writing otherwise chat gpt will take your job that's that's for real uh eric richardson says any fresh pow pow gopro live some shredding so i don't know man i, I kind of agree with them my wife and um sydney our lead sales people are in they're they're in this uh this little bungalow or whatever this is and they said, don't, I'm not allowed to get injured and I don't really know what I'm doing on skiing and snowboarding. So I do kind of want to do that. But right now they've asked me not to, cause I've, I've got to be at like a bunch of events and stuff. I don't know. It kind of sucks, but yeah, there's definitely some fresh pow pow, bro. There's been, uh, there's been some good snow out here the last couple of days. What are you guys up to? I'm not gonna lie, this this backdrop makes this live so much cooler. Thanks for joining me on it. Chat GPT, we talked about. Diversifying your lead sources, we talked about. Matt says, grip it and rip it. You can speak from a body cast if need be. <laughs> that and the new baby. And I know my wife is not gonna let me uh, get out of that no matter how injured I am I'm pretty sure the the waking up and whatever else um dude I don't even think I need to talk with this backdrop but yeah diversify your lead sources never know when an algorithm or a platform and then essentially the it went away or something like that or you built everything on Facebook and in two years it's gone it's just diversify diversify and what they can never take away from you these different platforms is your relationships and the relationships you've built uh, Mariah says how do you stay so energized and avoid burnout with always traveling speaking working and having a newborn 
Yeah. I... How do I avoid burnout? I think part of it is I really have fun. I really like doing this stuff a lot of the time. You don't have to like it all the time. And then when I don't enjoy it, I just know that sometime soon I will. You know, so I just keep it moving forward. And what I see is like when you're in that spot where it's it's difficult or there's something that's de-energizing that you know if you keep putting one foot in front of the other that there's going to be like a reward because and I'm not saying from that day or the or from that week but like I get rewards now for the work I've done get rewards in the form of like people being nice in the form of shout outs in the form of new business in the form of friendship and stuff like that from stuff I did six months ago do you know what I mean so like ultimately I just keep on getting rewards from putting one foot in front of the other. So that's one of the things that I think like that's motivating. So like today, I have no doubt that there will be somebody like a client that shouts us out or um, somebody that comes up and says, hey, that was very useful to me. Thank you. Or um, someone on my team whose life, her, whose life was actually changed by the opportunity that we provided that's super motivating and like inspiring to me. And I don't, I don't really take all the credit for it anymore. Um, but that's why I stay motivated and I do kind of do a lot, you know what I mean? Like, I, but I also have the time, most of the time I'm thinking to myself, like I could do more. I don't know. That's weird. But most of the time I, uh, I feel like I could do more. So you're saying I'm doing a lot. I feel always like I could do more. Uh, Matt Danskin says, check out crepes a la carte, downtown Breckenridge while you're there. Dude, I appreciate that because we are looking for some brunch this morning. Eric Richardson says, 52 miles per hour was my fastest run last month. Just don't turn. <laughs> Jasper says, wow, I need friends. Bro, I don't. I'll be real, though. The hack is making friends while you work. <laughs> I don't have, I mean, I have some good friends. I have some friends besides work, but the other thing is I like, try to make friends at these events and I try to I try to try to be friends with the people I'm working with which is weird which is weird and maybe a little bit of a liability or something like that but ultimately a lot of work a lot of life is work so I just try to make friends along the way Mariah thank you very much for asking that question I think it's a good one um, I hope everyone has an amazing day I really appreciate you guys joining me, and I'm going to do one more just view, view uh, video because yeah, it's so good. All right. And I will see you guys later on the next What Else Wednesdays where we do what else you should be doing besides SEL, PPC, and web design. That's what we do. But... You got to diversify your lead sources and uh, have a good one. Build out your relationships. Bye.